This is a new little flight controller, the Maytek Systems H743 Wing. Uh, it basically has OSD 7 UARTs, 2 I squared C ports, 1 CAN port. 13 PWM outputs, three BECs on a power distribution board, current sensors, uh, basically like the 765 wing. It has a couple little extra features like the uh, CAN bus, which in this case, on this one's a connector for a change. <laughs> Uh, if you look up the specs on the Maytech site, uh, it says at the bottom of this that what it's our new pilot designation is, but it says INAV to be supported soon. I would imagine that's old information and it's supported by now. We'll certainly find out real soon. So. To me, it looks almost exactly like the 765. Oops. Ah, oh, rats. Yep, it's exactly the same size, same layout, same BEC board. Mostly the same pin outs, except for some in this area. And then we have two connectors on the side here. I don't know for sure yet, but I'd say the bottom one, serial port. We don't have the plug in straight down for a serial port like on the 765. Other than that, it looks almost identical. Servo 1, servo through to 10, through 2 through 10. We got servo 11 and 12 here, exactly the same as on the 765. You got your video transmitter and then two cameras and then the array of UARTs and I squared two bus and such over here right down to the clear to send and request to send on UART 7 for our new pilot telemetry and I guess I'll have to open it up to truly see what the differences are hmm so there's the board what else comes with it it's like a daughter board some pin headers and the Requisite assortment of, I'd say, six screws for, ooh, eight screws in this instead of just six, and four nylon standoffs again. Let's store those away. Uh, I do like the colored pin headers for soldering on. Good. And let's see what's in here. Got a little daughter board, it looks like. Oh, here's a piezo buzzer, 
Looks like an on-off switch for the piezo buzzer. <laughs> Some kind of little button there. And a USB connector. Ooh, that's USB-C, I believe. Cool. Then we have a six-pin connector. So that obviously settles one thing. This connector obviously goes in this top one. Looks like hot to the right. There we go. Plug that in. Then we have two other cables here. We'll see what we use those for. One, they're both four pin. We'll see. So, again, what's the first thing we do when we get a new piece of electronics, period? We don't solder anything to it. Uh, just plugged in this connector because I had to. And we see if it powers up. So let's see here. That's the arrow for forward, so it's facing away. Ooh, it is a USB C. Oh man, that's so sweet. And looks like our LEDs are on the left side of the controller this time instead of right down along the front here like on the 765 wing but I see it powered up I see this powered up so that's all good so let's go over and open uh, iNav and let's see iNav has found it on COM 14 huh. 115 200 connect this firmware variant is not supported hey I've got the current version of iNav serial port opened Received version one four three. Whoa, <laughs> so it's not supported. None of my options over here on the left are clickable at all. So we'll come in here and do our. Version. Oops. Um, click down here. Version. Oh, it's got beta flight on it. Version is beta flight seven four three. Got version four point two point zero of beta flight on it. Okay. Guess there's one easy way to see if it accepts iNav. We'll see what happens here. Firmware flasher. We'll choose the board. Natec. Yep. It appears to me like this board is not negative not supported by iNav even at this point in time which is April 13th 2021 I do not see a Maytech 743 listed here 765 no 743 
guess that figures that out. <laughs> so let's see what happens here if we try to use iNav to flash Ardu Pilot onto it. Ardu Plane, actually. Open. Communication with bootloader failed. Therefore, I think it needs a DFU. Let me open Mission Planner. I don't think there's any way that Mission Planner will do the firmware, but we'll see. Nope. Mission Planner is not going to find it. So, I guess at this point, I'll have to go in and could try a DFU on iNav. Let's see. Have a DFU button. Hmm, that might be on that little daughter board this time. Yeah, I don't see it on the main board itself. Or the silk screen for it. Axel manuals. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to work with this and come back to doing the video after I educate myself a bit. Okay, I could not flash with iNav. Uh, I'm going to boot the board again, holding down this button right here on this little daughter board, which is the DFU button. I did find I could flash with beta flight. So I'm in DFU mode as you can see here. Go to firmware flasher. Basically the same as uh, I am, but. And I'm going to use the Ardu plane with bootloader and flash firmware. Click. And off it goes. Uh, I not sure what's going on with iNav. Evidently, it's just still not set up within iNav, so we'll have to wait for that to occur. Uh, it does run Ardu software, Ardu plane, Ardu copter, Ardu rover. I guess our do sub the whole nine yards. Uh, I think our do playing for what I've been seeing in the past few days is still a little more uh, stable than iNav. Saw some things about iNav just blacking out if the battery voltage got low. Well, you know, everything does. I haven't seen the full thing yet, but it seems like iNav might brown out a little earlier than Ardu Pilot does. Yeah, you never really want to take a LiPo battery below about 3.6 volts per cell, 3.7, 3.8, somewhere. Find your place in there that you like. I like about 3.7. Uh, if you go <laughs> below that, just about anything's going to brown out. So uh, I'm not buying into that whole thing quite yet. But I have seen examples on YouTube where I now have quit 
and Ardu did not. So there we are, programming, programming ing successful. Oh no! I'm gonna cut that buzzer off on that little daughter board. This little switch right here. Click. <laughs> they knew that was irritating. So now then we can go over and load up Mission Planner. Man, let's see. Oh man, this thing still thinks it's a 765 wing, but that won't matter for our purposes here. There we go. Grabbing the perimeters. So, with that, we have successfully powered up the board. We have flashed current software to it and connected to it. Uh, now I can connect other things, uh, open it up to start soldering it, etc., etc., and not worry about any warranty problems with the vendor. Though the vendor, Race Day Quads, they're really cool people, but you always want to work as much as you can from your end to have a good uh, relationship with your vendor. So test everything before you do any soldering or even connect the GPS to it. I've got a GPS here right ready to hook to it, but I'm not going to do it until I have checked the board for problems during shipment, problems during manufacturing. This is when they all come out. So there's the seven, whoops, no, 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 yeah, it is. But I think this is an H743 wing. Yeah, this is an H743 wing versus a F765 wing that I have been working with. So, this one looks good too. And more and more, I'm seeing that iNav has a nice graphical user interface for setting up planes, copters, etc., for running under iNav. Um, Ardu pilots, Ardu is not quite as user friendly um, but I think it's more functional you can control more uh, I'm still torn on the two of them there's things I like about them but I'm just getting into them so we'll just leave it all at that for now